so good morning. Thanks, uh, Chairman. Um, yeah, I, I'm uh, Marcus Posner, working for Cosina Company uh, uh, in Leiden and doing a lot of space uh, activities for, for payloads, for, for optics. And I'm going to talk about uh, what we are doing for, for yeah, next, uh, the next generation, new generation of small uh, instrumentation, optical instruments, activities we are doing uh, yeah, with DISA mainly, and um, for which we had a lot of cooperation with the, the, the TU Delft, with Massimo team. And, um, but before, let's say, talking really about this, I will do a little detour, so a little bit to say also what is the, what I've been doing with Massimo so far, let's say, let's say in line with, the, with the, the, what has been said so far. So it's uh, about yeah, 12 years we're working together. Uh, we started in, uh, at CNR where uh, I joined as a PhD student uh, back then. And I've been, uh, let's say, working mainly on airborne instrumentation, airborne campaigns, processing of data, calibrations, and uh, this has been done a lot with also with Strasbourg people, where Matthew was also working. And uh, I've been doing many campaigns, so you can see the Carbo Europe in 2005, where we were flying, I was flying actually every day all over uh, wine yards and forests, uh, every morning and afternoon for, for two months. Then with the car we went to, to uh, La Majada del Tietar, where we did also nice flights with uh, multispectral thermal infrared uh, instrumentation on this small plane. Very hot, 50 degrees, flying low level, so it was very hard. But we got nice uh, data and uh, nice processing, also applying the, the SEB, SEBS, MS, SEBS, multiscale. And I also had a lot of fun in processing this data and looking at this, these algorithms uh, by, made by uh, Beam, Bob, uh, uh, Massimo, so it was very, very interesting. And uh, for, me, for me, also interesting to see the perspective of the user, so on the processing side, even though I was doing a lot of uh, instrumentation as well back then. Then uh, in, uh, uh, yeah, 2006 also Eagle with, the, with, the, with Bob also was an interesting one because it was last minute call. We had to rush from Naples to here by car with the plane on the, on the back, on the trailer, so very, very interesting. And uh, then 2007, I joined uh, uh, <laughs> Cosine uh, uh, in the Netherlands. And uh, coincidentally also, Mas, I think the, the year after, went to TU Delft in, uh, in his current position as a professor, full professor there. So I started working on uh, small instrumentation for planetary science mainly, so uh, Mercury, uh, Jupiter, Europa, and so looking at really how to make things uh, small and efficient and still having some value in the data. And uh, so you can see here two examples that are, let's say, the two main uh, uh, payloads I've been working for, for years. Uh, uh, um, as you see on the left, let's say a very nice uh, 30 by 30, about 30 centimeters uh, cage with uh, three instruments in it. So uh, an spectral system, a uh, single photon counting laser altimeter and a stereoscopic camera. Uh, all very uh, nice engineered, I have to say, silicon carbide, very light uh, weight, uh, passive thermal control, uh, uh, fancy materials also for compensation for distortion. And, um, and on the right, you see the, the counterpart in the infrared. So this is also the same kind of sites, uh, up to 10 kilograms, and uh, full spectral from, uh, let's say, near infrared 0.7 up to 15 uh, microns. So covering mid-wave uh, infrared up to thermal infrared. So full, full spectra, full, full uh, set of data. Uh, also here with, uh, let's say, active cooling, uh, um, very nice uh, Stirling microcoolers from Israel, and. Uh, um, uh, let's say cooling up to uh, down to 80 Kelvin. So uh, this has been the start also uh, the cooperation again with Massimo to see how to use this all this nice exercise of breadboarding and and uh, uh, prototypes that we have done over the years for Earth observation. So we started looking at applications. We we looked how to use this outside the space station. I remember back then also many of you were involved, but uh, then we yeah ESA didn't do nothing about that. But we put also a lot of effort there. And if I remember well, the scientific case was about radiation forcing on vegetation, so how to study this with uh, combination of spectral data and uh, uh, altimetry data on vegetation as well, because uh, uh, of the laser that we have on board. But from this, so um, also started many activity I'm currently busy on, and uh, also with, with you, Delft, for some of them. So the, for the laser part of, of SILAT, you see on the left, we are doing now an ESA project to build a multi-beam laser altimeter for vegetation structure and, and height retrieval. Um, still a breadboard phase. Actually, we are going to test this uh, uh, next month in, um, in, in Speldobos on the tower uh, in September. So we are also discussing this with, with ITC how to test it. And uh, the hyperspectral part instead uh, uh, triggered a new development that I will, it's actually the topic of this presentation that we are uh, now building a very nice and, and compact uh, uh, spectral system. On the right, instead, you see this nice uh, thermal, and oh, yeah, I heard a lot of uh, this lacking of thermal infrared data in the, in the, for, for you, for the, for the community. 
And um, so I have to say that we are working on this to make this happen. So there is a, a, a mission, let's say, that is going to start very soon for having uh, thermal data, uh, let's say, within a Dutch uh, mission. And we are working hard on that to, to take off. So, and uh, yeah, we did a lot of, of uh, let's say, also hybrid spin off, let's say, uh, starting from those concepts. We built a nice integrated spectral plus laser altimeter that is uh, uh, available for hybrid use. So, we have been tested on the sky of Altera in Hellingen. And this also was with, with, uh, with the Massimo, uh, of course, to delve more in the application side, so and helped us in understanding what kind of requirements we, we should have uh, taken into account. Then, um, yeah, so let's go even smaller. So let's uh, uh, address these nanosats now booming uh, uh, that uh, everybody is, uh, is, uh, is, uh, is um, seeing. And um, so actually we got, let's say, running a project with ESA to build a yeah, state-of-art compact. So we are talking about a kilogram uh, spectral instrument with uh, the intent of, uh, uh, the, uh, of launching more than one of course, so constellations. And so also the way of thinking about missions is completely changing, so not anymore a big instrument, maybe two, three in tandem, but really high numbers, high visit times can be more times per, per day uh, in terms of data availability. And uh, of course, we are talking of smaller instruments, much smaller instruments, so performance also scales down a bit. But so the, they are not competing with the big, with, with the Sentinels or with the, with the Earth Explorers. They are complementary, I would say. So you, you get a bit less in terms of maybe your resolution, a bit less about uh, uh, yeah, dynamic range or whatever. But you get, uh, we think, a very nice operational tool. So maybe it's not more about science that can be addressed with, with bigger instruments. But for operations, I think this is the way to go. And uh, this, uh, yeah, you can imagine this is 90% uh, discount, let's say, on, on a mission implementation. And you can get also a state of our technology every year in orbit with yeah, a fraction of the cost of this big satellite. So it's a parallel track. Also, ESA now understood that. And it's actually uh, doing a lot of activities in the, with this regard. So we started uh, looking at this. And uh, there are many limitations. Um, I will not list all. But the last point is the very important one. Uh, these small platforms, uh, uh, the, the main limit is that uh, the bandwidth for communication for downlink is very limited. So if you're talking about hyperspectral, you can imagine already the, the huge amount of data. So how do we do that? So of course, the, 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 the guys that are making the tra transceiver, transmitter, are working to make it more efficient, but it will never be enough. So what we um, are doing together with, uh, with the two Delft is actually to, to, um, to reduce the problem on the other side. So let's do the processing on board, the full chain, uh, or let's try. And uh, let's try to get to a level two processing on board and, and don't download any more uh, images, but only information. So the idea is to be able to download coordinates and information about yeah, different processes, different applications. And this is what is going on right now. Uh, yeah, we have uh, yeah, a relatively large consortium. So the COSIGN is, is the prime contractor with ESA. And uh, we have VITO in Belgium, so very well-known institute also for particle generation uh, instruments and processing. They are helping us on, on the first part of the processing, what is called the uh, level 1B or, or, or uh, about that. So the, the, let's say the actual um, uh, reconstruction of the hypertube, so uh, of different bands. Then we have QDELF for the what we call the, yeah, level 2 and further processing, so getting to the geophysical parameters. And um, in terms of algorithms, and uh, we have SNT from Norway that is helping us instead to make this algorithm operational in software, so to implement that in uh, real processing boards that will be flying and processing in real time. And then we have a series of, uh, let's say, uh, suppliers, partners for optics manufacturing, and and uh, IMEC for also sensors and uh, Easy that is a company in the Netherlands also active in uh, nano satellites as well in terms of missions launching and, and so on. So all this quite uh, a big group working on this, and uh, so it's quite promising. Um, the goal, as I say, so is to make sure that uh, we can exploit this new trend of these uh, uh, small platform satellites. Make sure we can actually use in a smart way uh, by doing this processing on board. So this is the, I will say, the unique selling point of this system, and uh, and therefore let's say this uh, um, makes also available. Uh, uh, data in, in a short time frame, so we can also use for early wording for, for different applications. Um, the applications that we selected during the, the project are, yeah, are listed here. Uh, of course, the, idea were, the ideas were, were many, so we, we did a selection, a down selection. And um, so what we are, we are working on is, uh, 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 of course, vegetation, so being a visible near infrared instrument, that's uh, one of the things that can be easily done with, the, of course, also simple indices. 
and uh, crop water requirements, um, fire hazard also with the, with the help of, of Carmine. Uh, uh, about see what is not not the, uh, the the fire detection or or monitoring, but really telling to users what is the risk of that a fire can 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 uh, can happen, and uh, flooding uh, as well, and uh, change detection of land cover land usage. This is also something that uh, yeah Ben Gort uh, is very busy uh, on, and uh, it, that's also very challenging. So try to to get an early warning system that will trigger a signal when uh, something is changing in terms of shape on ground of segments that we are identifying beforehand, or actual uh, radiance, uh, uh, radiative content, let's say, dendrometric content. So if something changes, this can be triggered and maybe can, um, <coughs> let's say, we are um, uh, taking on board also the requirement from, from bigger satellites, this because this early warning system can be used also as a planning tool for bigger satellites. So once uh, uh, an event is triggered, maybe a satellite with a better resolution can look into the, uh, into the event in, with a, a more uh, performant uh, system. Um, of course, all this application will be running in real time and uh, means that we have a very powerful tool and uh, what we are uh, planning is to have um, a system that will process data based on the area that is flying over. So we will have certain area where we will do flooding, some other we will do crop requirements, some other we will do fire hazard. Depends on, on the on the needs in on that area. And um, also we are uh, looking at how to reduce the data not only by a full processing, uh, let's say in a conventional way, but also thanks to new algorithms also to Delft to reduce the number of bands, to, to, to select actually the bands that have more information, so the more informative bands. And uh, this can be done also in a dynamic way while looking at, at uh, that particular thing. A um, few, just let's say a recap of the requirements that we have been uh, tried to identify at the beginning, and this has been the, the, the driver for the design of the system that is now under manufacturing. So um, one of the main, let's say, decision points was about the GSD, because this is then, let's say, uh, yeah, driving all the, the, the optics, uh, the sign and manufacturing, the sites, the complexity. So we tried to find uh, a, a requirement that would fit most of the applications. And um, so we ended up with something of about, let's say, between <coughs> 50 meters from very low altitude up to 80 meters at 600 kilometers. Um, these are number of bands, spectral bands, but in terms of bands, we will have much more bands, about 45, and the resolution can go down to seven nanometers about. This a schema will not describe, just to say that we uh, uh, have, we are implementing the software in a very flexible way, so we could, we can um, have, we will have different modules, and we will be able to actually decide um, at what level to stop in terms of processing, what to do to store the data, to download few few bands, maybe to do the full processing, download all the information, and uh, so this is right now happening. And uh, what we are trying to do is to make, especially the level two module. Uh, are independent, so that also future users, future customers can develop their own module for their own application. And uh, we are making the, the, um, the software such that uh, a new update can, can be made easily. From, so it's a new user, a new application, upload a new module, and he can then download this information, his data, and see whether the algorithm works or, and with which limitations, of course. Um, yeah, this is based on technology we have in-house, so in terms of sensors and, uh, and uh, we are working, of course, not only in the visible near infrared, but already, uh, as I said before, for mid-infrared, thermal infrared. Um, this is, let's say, uh, the, the, an overview of the, 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 the payload. Um, now is, is right now under machining uh, the, the full system. So as you see, it's very compact, but also it's a kind of monolithic approach, so the optics, the mechanics is one piece milled out from one block of aluminum, so trying in this way to limit the, the alignment process during assembling and integration verification. So in principle, we should get something that once it's screwed together should be already almost aligned, and we have few, let's say, other uh, degree of freedom to, to, to fully align the system. Also, there is a yeah, fancy thermal, uh, passive thermal control. Uh, we are using, uh, um, yeah, materials uh, uh, facing and also um, the processing boards that are quite powerful actually are used also as a heaters when, when it's needed. And this can balance, let's say, the system to keep at around uh, 20 degrees uh, almost all time during operations. And calibration is an, another interesting, uh, I'm sure you will uh, yeah, have a lot of questions about that, but what we are doing is, uh, <coughs> uh, uh, let's say, using, of course, vicarious calibrations in various sites, uh, but also external bodies like moon, 
and uh, uh, stars and, and other kind of, of um, algorithms to, to do a full calibration. And uh, these are the final, let's say, specification of the system as, as now is, is going to be manufactured. So the, the main, let's say, uh, feature is very large detector. So you see a 12 megapixel, pretty, pretty large. So this what is pretty, it's pretty big. So with already two, three hypertubes, we can actually do a, a full coverage with a very nice uh, repetition time or revisit time. Uh, signal to ratio is actually a bit higher than 100. That was kind of threshold we selected. And um, so quite a large number of bands. Uh, quite nice resolution. This is how we look like the, the, the satellite. So very small. Hypertube is the one at, at bottom. And all the rest is bus uh, communication attitude and so on. So we are uh, working, let's say, with these. Therefore, we are also using a state of art in materials, coatings. Uh, projects, research projects that are running right now are feeding the project, uh, uh, especially for, for what concerns uh, stray light, buffling, and all these kind of uh, um, developments. And the result is that we are now building the system. We will have assembly this review in, uh, in uh, mid-July. Uh, and after that, we'll start building the system and, and testing. And uh, we are also working on a demonstration, uh, in orbit demonstration mission for, for next year. That's it. So these are GSTP projects as well. So we have, I have to thank all these guys.